Most people in life have a ability of observation, and when they have that ability of observation, they know what to say most of the time. They can observe something going on and say, well, this is what I'm observing. They can also observe something and say, this is what I'm thinking, or this is what I'm feeling. When we're talking about what a person thinks, feels, or observes, it's totally their opinion. As a trained journalist, underneath the First Amendment, we have the right to do reporting. Reporting is also a form of recording or documentation of what is truly happening to someone who lives out loud and proud, not at all, someone who is humbly living in the streets during a time of COVID. People who want to help a person in a time of COVID have to do one of three things. They have to simply drive up, hand the person some cash, and say, it looks like you might need a little help today, have something, do something for yourself on me today, no strings attached. And that is a gift that you are giving because you want the blessings from the Lord, from your generosity, not doing it with any anticipation that you're going to receive something or take something from the person who's in struggle or homelessness. The second thing that you can do, of course, is always carry some cans of tea, cans of lemonade in your vehicle trunk, or cans of protein like chicken, beef, or ham. Those are things that are easy for someone who is living in poverty to drink for the sweetener, for the sugar for the water content and also someone can have the lift to their energy levels by having that protein. Some pastas such as rotini in a can such as by Campbell's or by Chef Boyardee is edible cold. Ravioli can sometimes be a little bit harder to palate but it's okay it can also taste and get old to eat that. There is chicken noodle soup that also is something that can be eaten cold much better than a vegetable soup where the acidity can really harm a person's intestines. In life we have the truth of what works and what doesn't for living openly in the streets with no refrigerator, no stove, and no microwave. The third thing that a person can do is actually say, hey, I get that you're in struggle right now. Is there anything that I could do for you today or in the next day that would help you to accomplish a goal with my income, my financial network, or my social networks or my resources that could be at my disposal through my social capabilities either online or offline and with that then you might learn that someone is needing well a new backpack or someone may be needing a new thermos with two wheels so that they can carry food easily and travel safely in the rain at the same time you may discover someone needs a mobile wheelchair or they may need a rollator or like me they need may need something that's sort of a cart I had other sets of wheels before, but some monster always broke it down. When I lived here at the mall a short time last year, someone actually destroyed a buggy that I had found in the trash. They literally broke it down to the point that it was so low it could have been used by a child. At the same time, I then had a thermos that was broken. The wheels were de determined and destroyed by someone. And openly, the second one that a very kind church lady got for me out of her own paltry funds from Walmart ended up getting literally having wheels taken off and bad wheels put on it and someone took my new wheels to their own home while I slept. Eventually the wheels got taken off it completely. That was something that was to be bereft about. In life I have truth to speak about the world and the truth is that people are very unkind. Very unkind and unapologetic about their lack of compassion for people like me who live in the streets. A lot of people want to play up and drive up and say, hey, why don't you go to this particular shelter? And like, sorry, been there, done that, never going there during the day or night again for a lot of real reasons. They don't quite get that. They also try to let you know where the free meals are, which you already know because you're an educated individual who can find those things on the go. You see, in life you might have to learn to listen a little bit more before you start talking to say, may I ask you what it is you've done to try to solve some of your challenges or may ask you what it is that you brought you to living in the particular streets. What I find most intriguing about a lot of the Christians who try to play with me is that they'll just say, what, don't you want the money? And you're like, actually, that's sort of insulting because anyone who's living in poverty needs income, they need some sort of revenue, they need some sort of generosity, but they don't want to be played with after they've been given them given a paltry three to four dollars. It's just not worth it to the individual to be insulted to be harassed, to be harangued, to be cut, to be assaulted. And that's what people sometimes do when they give a fun gift of funds. They think they have the right to take. That is a problem in some different cultures. That is also a problem in places that it shouldn't be a problem that should know better. 
In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about what goes on for people who live in the streets before, besides what people think goes on when you live in poverty. There's a real difference between what people know versus what people need to know. In life, we have moments of time to talk about the truth. And the truth is, people don't choose usually to live in the streets, but sometimes cybercrime, identity theft, and fraud puts them there. And that is a hard place to be.